Jim Ripper Owens, uh, Akron, Ohio. Uh, you just turned 55. Uh, your net worth is about $5 million, and you are currently active in seven bands. Is that all? Does that all sound right? Well, I guess so. I mean, active in seven bands it's, would, um, you know, putting a record out and being in, in the band is, you know, not sure if that's it. Some, a lot of things I just put records out with bands, but uh, I think active at the moment, I would be active in KK's Priest, uh, Three Trimmers. And obviously, Ripper, uh, my new solo EP uh, coming out right now. December December the 9th, is that right? Yeah, December 9th is, is the official release date. But I mean, people have ordered it in advance, uh, autographed copies and, and, and all that stuff. And they've already gotten all the stuff. So uh, you can pre-order it uh, now online. But it, I think the official kind of street date is December 9th. And uh, uh, there... Is there vinyl and obviously CD? Is it coming out on both of those formats? Yeah, it's vinyl. <clears throat> you can go to a, a martyrstore.net, M-A-R-T-Y-R, martyrstore.net, and you can order. There's all kinds of bundles. There's vinyl, there's CDs, there's actually cassettes, you know, hats, shirts, stickers, posters. There's all kinds of stuff. Do, do you have a copy of everything that you've been a part of? Uh, I probably do. I'm not exactly sure because I'll tell you what, uh, especially since COVID hit, I've done so many guest vocal appearances. Uh, all the records I've done full records of, like I have one that just came out called Pyramid. That's a, a progressive metal record. It's the second one I've done. I've got, you know, copies of that and, and held hostage and, and just, uh, you know, uh, of the guest appearances that I've done, uh, Leviathan Project, uh, Engineer Society Project. These are things that I've guest sang on. Um, but I, you know, the, the singles I've done with people, I don't think I have all the copies of that. You know, I probably can go on the internet and find it. But uh, um, when COVID hit and I couldn't tour, I just started guest singing on just so many people's stuff. But, you know, the, the meat and potatoes and the main stuff is, is, is the ones I've mentioned and, uh, and obviously, my main thing, a new revenge, uh, which hopefully we'll be working on a new one of that. Um, so there's a lot, but I got a lot out there. Yeah. I have some friends that, uh, own everything by particular bands and own multiple copies of all the different colors. There are uh, people that will buy everything that someone puts out. Yeah. I sign a lot of stuff. I mean, when I, when I'm on tour and, and people bring me stuff to sign. I, I see things that I've never seen before, you know, of, of a song that I've sang with a band. And, um, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Hopefully I'll be signing a lot of the Ripper solo EP return of death row. I mean, it, it's, it's so amazing, you know, six songs and it's just bone crushing stuff. Is this your third solo album? Uh, or maybe possibly, uh, two and a half. I know yeah, that, you know, uh, it, it, it kind of is. I mean, Beyond Fear was a band. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people look at it as a solo record because I I wrote half the the music and then all of the lyrics and melodies. Um, and then obviously the first solo solo record would be Tim Rip Rowan's Play My Game. And and this is this you know, but I, you know, it's kind of like my third, you know. And then and then uh, Jamie and I and the guys and Nick and. Nikki and all the guys, we're going to be working on a, a full length one now as well. So uh, that'll be, uh, that'll be it. But yeah, you know, I kind of say this is a third. And uh, who do we have? Pl I know on the uh, uh, play my game was, there was a lot of um, uh, guests, uh, guests on that record. Are we expecting a lot of, uh, there was a lot of guests on this one as well. No, there wasn't this one. We just wanted to, you know, and Jamie and I talked about that. Jamie Joster, we talked about it. And uh, I actually wanted to do it with just myself. He talked, you know, not a lot of guests, but a bass player here and a guitar player here. And um, I was just like, let's just do it. You know, we got Nicky Belmore on on drums and he uh, uh, co-produced it with, with Jamie. And we have Charlie Belmore on guitars and Christopher Odette on bass. Um, so it's, um, you know, it's really just a, a straightforward metal record with with a band, you know.
Of all the people you've worked with, uh, which have been the easiest, surprising, and uh, most challenging? Well, you know, Abel, I mean, listen, when I did my solo record, I had, you know, so many artists I grew up listening to and so many artists that are my friends and, and uh, um, I, they've all been easy to work with. I mean, it's crazy. Their ideas they come up with, uh, you know, a, a great story was <clears throat> um, I had, um, I'm trying to think of, uh, man, I'm just, I've been doing so many interviews. My mind is, uh, is is blown um bass player uh and mr big um i guess i better skip that story because my brain is so fried that uh i can't remember names isn't that crazy listen first of all you get 55 you start forgetting all kinds of stuff this is true um yeah uh, i think um what did i think middle age is not 55 middle age is more like 27 or something like that 35 we are past we are past oh, you know, our expiration date i remember i remember i remember now he just came to me because he's always blown me away it was billy sheehan i you know i knew it would come to me because my mind was, ah tell but, us but billy uh came in the studio with bob Kulix and i had this song i had written called the world is blind and i wrote the bass there was a bass breakdown which i wrote i just played it on guitar the the breakdown of it and Man, he just sat down and it was just like watching him play it. And he was, you know, we became good friends after this. And he's such a great guy. But watching him play was like, man, it was like so good and and so amazing that I was like, holy crap. He just took what I wrote and and, and made it amazing. But, you know, every, I, there's so many of them like that who played on it did that. They brought their – and that's what I said. You know, if you're playing guitar, just play. Just play the solos. You know, uh, Neil Zaza, whoever was playing Jeff Loomis, I said, uh, I said, just do your thing, man. Just play. Are you uh, pretty good at arranging things? Uh, I am. Uh, you know, I, I imagine there's people out there who de- never think so. But when you look at the solo record, when you look at Beyond Fear, I mean, it was a pretty good reviewed record or, or a new revenge. And But, uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I will write basic songs, right? If it's going to be a technical song, or a lot of stuff. I write stuff that I grew up with of like a Black Sabbath style or, a, uh, you know, the basic British steel from Judas Priest style. I write things in my mind that you remember the rhythm parts and they're basic. I, I write basic melodies on guitar. I'm not a guitar player. Uh, I play guitar, but I'm not a guitar player. I write the stuff and then I give it to the real people. Um, I prefer to just write vocals. Um but yeah, I just, you know, I write straightforward, basic stuff. You know I mean? That's what I, how I play and what I do. And, uh, that's if I'm writing something, that's what I'll do. Like I couldn't have wrote the stuff that's on this solo EP. I mean, it's just amazing technical stuff. That's not the style that I go for when I write my stuff. Yeah. I have a friend that was in a band called four non blondes. And she said that, um, I think the hit song they had, was uh let it be backwards um oh yeah that's funny how uh do you ever try that yourself if you're taking a black sabbath riff or judas priest riff and uh i don't know add your own flavor to that particular riff because obviously there's only so much that can be done within the confines of you know is it 22 frets or six yeah. strings you know what i'm saying no no i just I, you know, and it's been a while since I've, I've written, usually I would just sit there and turn on the recorder and start playing riffs and put them together. I never think of anything else or, or another song or, or anything. I just kind of play the riffs and it's totally different that when I write the vocals, like I wrote the last pyramid, the vocals on a lot of that record and, 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 uh, you know, the solo record and things here and there. And I just, the mu- the music's given to me and I just, sit in front of my my recording equipment and start singing you know i start and I, and the lyrics just come out i just start going with it music's kind of kind of the same way with me i just start playing and piece it together and uh, uh but i never think of anything else did you uh, record any uh special tracks for the japanese uh, for this album no not no because this was just an ep our plan is uh you know jamie's been trying to get me to do this for for probably 10 years He's like, man, you got to make a more brutal record, you know, and people love Jugulator and uh, you got to kind of 
think, you know, just do something. You're heavy. Vo- and listen, this is this album is me, man. This voice is me. The music's a lot heavier. It's It's got a lot of faster songs, but singing, I, I kind of sing the same, but my aggressive style of singing is, is my favorite. I like to sing every style, clean, heavy, high notes, you know, uh, you know, power, whatever I have to sing, I do. Um, you know, so that's basically what I do. As long as you can still do it well, why not? Yeah, to be honest, right now, at this point, I'm doing it as good as ever. Uh, I think about five, six, seven, eight, the, you know, the past five to eight years or so, five, six years, I haven't been on my top of my game. I don't know why. And then about a, a year ago, I started getting it back. And, you know, this summer, I, I toured South America and Latin America and did 16 shows in 18 days, and I've never sang any better. And um all the performances and the live shows I've been doing. I just got back from the West Coast and in Alaska and, and Seattle and San Diego and LA and, and Tijuana. And you know, my voice is in top shape, you know. So, uh, um, I mean, in the studio, you can get away with anything, really. I mean, you, you can sit there and do it until you get it right, you know. Uh, um, but I've, I've, I'm a first take guy a lot of times nowadays, and uh, um, I'm pretty lucky that I'm singing as good as ever. Is the whole gripe about backing tracks and vocal enhancement much to do about nothing, or is it something to get upset about? Well, I guess if if you can't sing anymore, you know, or you're not doing it and you're using backing tracks, I mean, I don't, I listen, I'm not against backing tracks that are actually backing tracks that are backing some backing harmonies or, you know, backing orchestras or keyboards, you know, any track that's, that's, being used as your main track that's pretty stupid you know i mean i I don't really understand that but you know if someone's got to do it i mean it just shows that they they don't have it vocally anymore i mean and they like to tour so they get out there and try to do a show i mean uh hell i'd love to get up there and have built back and track don't have to put any effort into it (laughs) but uh you know it never should be used for a main track unless you're shooting some kind of video or something or you're doing a live tv show i I think using uh, main vocal tracks uh, as a backing track is is pretty stupid, but I'm not against backing tracks for backup stuff. Some people, like you said, I think just don't have that voice anymore. I I saw Dawkins within the last five years, and uh, I'm a fan, and I sing along. And when it came time to hit those high notes, and I'm there with him, uh, it just didn't go, and it was very disappointing. Well, unfortunately for Don, I think it's any note at this point. You know, I mean, he's got some vocal problems, and and as, I mean, listen, as a singer, it happens. Like I said, I was struggling for years. I I still sounded, I could still sing good live. I still got through it. Um, but as a singer, there's nothing you can do. Sometimes it just goes. You know, I mean, it's just not there. I mean, you can get it back though. Um, I mean, I don't understand how Don lost it being that it's such an easy style to sing and it's not a whole lot of power there. I mean, listen, I'm a huge Dawkins fan. I grew up loving Dawkins as well. And I saw him a few years back and I was out there singing along as well. Um, but you know, as a singer, you just have it and you don't, you know, sometimes you lose it and, and you just don't have it and hopefully you get it back. And, uh, um, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, I live, I, I don't hardly drink. I go to the gym every morning. I take care of my voice and I lost it and I couldn't figure out why, you know, I'm like, man, why I'm doing any, every, I'm doing more stuff now to take care of my voice than I did back in the day. And it's just, it just wasn't there. So, um, you know, but you know, I'm not going to tell any singer who doesn't have anymore not to go out and do live shows because, uh, they love what they do. You know, they love to get on stage. It's a, it's a passion and it's a, it's like a disease and you love to do it. You know, you don't have it, you don't have it, but, you know, at least they're trying. As long as they're trying to do it, if you sound like shit and you're trying, at least you're trying. I mean, uh, I mean that's you know, there's no fault in that really. Yeah, as fans, we like to see our original members, uh, re- regardless sort of of where their their vocals. Well, are that's at. not a good thing to say to me, is it? Now I sang for Judas Priest, so as if basically. As a fan, to me, I want to see original members too, but I also want to see a band that's good. Like I would love, I'll go see Foreigner, um, 
you know, me, I love Black Sabbath better with Dio. Um, you know, I, I, I still, I still want to, I, as a, as a musician, want to hear the songs good. I want to see the original members, but I also don't want to go see a, the original members make a fool of themselves on stage, you know, because um, if you're up there as a shell of yourself, you know, it's like, well, you know, and people are walking away going, boy, this is horrible. Then, you know, uh, you know, watching Journey. I mean, look at that. That's a good example. You know, you go watch a Journey show and it's like, yeah, I'd love to, to see uh, Steve Perry up there. But you know what? This is Journey and the kids rocking and it sounds great. Uh, my bad. That wasn't a dig at you. I no, no, no. I know. I know. I was joking with you. <laughs> uh, if Pantera needed a temporary replacement singer for whatever reason, would you be up to the task? Well, I would be up to the task as celebrating Pantera like they're doing right now, which I think is fantastic. I mean, uh, all these guys, uh, uh, you know, Zach and, and, and Charlie, and it's the, you couldn't have picked two cooler guys to, to celebrate them. But yeah, you know, I mean, my thing is I would celebrate it. I have my own career. I do my own stuff. People are always like, oh, you're always singing for this and that. Well, listen, I put records out of me singing my own stuff all the time. I can't put any more records out than me singing stuff. But I would, because I nail, I could, I nail styles like that. I mean, I, I love Pantera and I, and uh, I love that style. And I would for sure get up and celebrate the career of Pantera with those guys. Absolutely. It's never going to happen, but you know, I, I'm not replacing anybody. I'm just, I would just be celebrating it, you know? Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. Really. It's a, uh, it's a cel uh, live music and music and the entertainment. It's a, uh, it's a celebration. Yeah. Um, which of the two priest albums uh, you sang on is your favorite and why? I think demolition is probably my favorite. Um, I love them both, you know, you know, some of my favorite songs are on jugulator bloodstained and, and, uh, dead meat. And, but, uh, I love, I love, uh, demolition. I think it has a, a wider variety. It has more melody. It still has the heaviness. I love songs like one-on-one hell is home, uh, machine man in between. I mean, it's just filled with, and it's got the, you know, lost and found and it's just, uh, but I love them both, but I probably have to go with, uh, with demolition. And that's the one that we can listen to on Spotify as well. Yeah, shockingly, they haven't erased that one yet. So that as long as, I mean, if Judas Priest probably finds out that it's out there, they'll probably get rid of it. They'll probably send you the, the cease and desist order. Yeah, I'm sure they would. They'll blame me for it. <laughs> now, just to be fair, it's the management that sends you these letters. It's not a letter from Rob or... Well, it's usually just a call. It's not a bad... Uh, threat kind of a thing it's just a reminder i would say you know and it's always something that i have it, the funniest thing is is it's always something that's out of my control i mean a, a a promoter in south america uses the jugulator cover in their artwork for a for a flyer and i get a message saying you know we'll have to sue if they if they use this and i'm like ah, i'm not doing that or australia uses the word metal gods which i'm pretty certain it's not illegal for them to use it in australia i don't think anybody owns it in australia um, uh, was, uh, but, uh, you know, to, to tell me, and I listen, fine. I, I told him, you know, yeah, we, that's, uh, you know, but I, it's not my doing. I'm not making these things up. I'm going to make an appearances, but, uh, and it's not, listen, I'm friends with the band I'm friends with everybody. Um, but you know, it is funny that the only time they ever reach out to me is just to go, Hey, we'll have to sue you if you use this. I was like, okay, thank you. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, blood from a stone. No, I didn't. yeah, yeah. Uh, you just wrapped up. Uh, speaking of uh, a Metal Gods Australian tour, and uh, you played a festival at a Mexican restaurant in Los Angeles with Bitch and uh, Ross the Boss. I heard that it went well. Well, it was okay. It was a little bit of a well. The the Australian tour was fantastic. Man, it was big crowds and. You know, Simon Wright and myself and the guys doing, the, uh, you know, celebrating, you know, Dio and uh, celebrating Ronnie and celebrating Judas Priest. And we played my era stuff. It was great. The, sh the shows on the West Coast, he did Australia or we did uh, uh, Alaska and Seattle and San Diego and Los Angeles and and uh, and 
Tijuana, Mexico. The Los Angeles, though, was a bit of a clusterfuck. You know, um, it was uh, not put together very well, and it moved venues at the last minute. But the fans were really good, and it was a fun time. And um, uh, you know, it was, it's always good to, to get in front of some good fans. You uh, you make the best. You attempt to make the best of uh, whatever situation you're in, right? Well, you have to. I mean, there's people who who are there to see you. I mean, it's hard sometimes to get up there and be serious. You know, I might cut this, some songs out of the set, which I certainly did that night. Um, but you uh, you as the singing goes and as the playing and show goes, you got to give it your full effort and have fun with the fans. And I got to be honest, as messed up as that show was, the venue, uh, you know, it's funny because it was in like a Mexican restaurant, but actually it was in a hall in the back of it, so it was actually it could have been a cool venue. Looks like it was set up for a wedding though, but, uh, it was actually a pretty cool place that they found at the last minute. We were like, but we're, you know, we were like on the floor and, um, but what made it good with all the screw ups and all the mess ups was the, the, the people at the show, the fans and, and, uh, you know, bitch was fantastic. And, uh, it was really, uh, it was fun to play in front of them because they were very enthusiastic. Well, uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, do you have any final thoughts, uh, words of wisdom, dirty jokes you'd like to share with uh, people listening to this? Well, you know, you can find out anything, what's going on on my Facebook official page or, or any Tim Rippon's Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff. You can find me, Tim Rippon's. It's easy. And uh um, my website. And also, uh, you know, I do cameos for people for the holidays. You can look me up on cameo and do a, a, you know, I hate you. Happy birthday, all that kind of good stuff. But the main thing now is to get return to death row ripper. It's just ripper return to death row solo EP. It's, it's heavy. Uh, if you like my heavier stuff, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, beyond fear, jugulator, uh, you're going to l- absolutely love this one. I think it's the best stuff I've done in years and it's, it's kick ass. So, so check that out. Martyrstore.net. You can, you can look for stuff. Um, like I said, there's all kinds of great bundles, all kinds of great stuff in there. Just keep scrolling down, find it. Jamie's got his stuff on there and other stuff. So you got to scroll down and then hit view more. And there's all kinds of stuff. Metal, 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 met